love from love, hope from hope, and peace from our living Prince of Peace. And the words that the angels had uh, announced to the shepherds were amazing, for they had said, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace and goodwill towards all men. And those words of poetry s seemed in those moments to be echoing through that area as a real strong sense of wonder swiftly swept over those shepherds as well as they started heading towards the manger. And once the halo, uh, halo bearers vanished, the angels disappeared. Those sheep herders then went in haste into Bethlehem's outskirts next to the end so that they could finally see the amazing son of love and faith that the angels had so lovingly spoken about. It was a, an extremely anxious time. It was then their most impatient moment of some great anticipation and some time of some great impatience, for nothing could have kept those shepherds from rushing to see with all speed to see that little consolation of Israel, who is always fated to be our lawgiver of grace and love far before uh, Adam was ever created. Nor, could, uh, nor did they really understand, though, that the forthcoming miracle that he would also end up becoming the graceful giver of the brand new law of loving one's neighbors as them, themselves. So it was also the moment when no room in the end became a very good reason to celebrate for those shepherds, for sure, for every happy soul thereabouts uh, who would end up gazing in, in, into the eyes uh, of uh, Mary and Joseph and their baby little Jesus. For our Father uh, in heaven, he wanted his son of love where he was, right in the middle of nowhere, so that he could easily be found by the three wise kings of the east who had chased after Christ's glorious star of many bright welcoming twinkles. Even the rocks were crying out. It was therefore the very best hour when our great... Uh, when, when our great uh, ringing timepiece in heaven was ringing its bells much louder than ever before while announcing our Savior's birth as it sounded off for the amazing arrival of that future head of all principalities. And within those same golden moments, all the creation also entered into the wildest throes of a fantastic jubilee. Even the weather of that October day was much nicer than usual, for some real gentle winds of tranquility were then blowing all throughout Zion like some breezes of utter bliss gone right out of control. Extra extraordinary winds of Jehovah in those moments. And those peaceful winds of blessedness were hard enough to feel, and yet they were soft enough to cause some pretty nice tingling sensations, especially for those shepherds in between the goosebumps uh, that those kingly ambassadors of humanity had, um, who would be quickly bending their shaking knees as they all bowed, bowed down to our beloved newborn Son of God. And Mother uh, Nature was also celebrating that most incredible birthday of our little yawning king of lords with some abounding serenity upon some pleasant breezes which royalty always deserves. And neither would uh, Mother Nature's very best wishes for our living hope ever be able to dwindle or fade away, for it goes without saying that the inner illumination of that young cornerstone of God's most solid foundation of all never would have had any chance of being uh, able to be wiped away by uh, any following nightfalls. Nothing could get rid of that most magnificent light. And royalty was seeking royalty. And uh, love was calling unto love, deep calls unto deep. And so those wise men then came forth to worship. And on the evening of our Lord's birthday, the old man on the moon never failed to smile ever so brightly, for it was f as full as it could be, so it could shine down its great joy in order to spotlight the arrival of our earth-bound heavenly sun of endless compassion. Neither were there any moon moonbeams nearly as strong as the intense inner light of that newborn baby's overflowing spirit of love and blessedness that Christ had. Uh, from before the foundation of the earth when he was slain 
uh, before anything else was created. And it was fated that science would eventually hypothesize that if the sun ever exploded, the earth would still see its brightness for eight minutes before darkness came, for it takes that long for light to travel. But the miraculous light which came forth that Christmas day was always predestined to never pass away, even if our world ever really did. For without any question, the little infant Jesus would always be the light of the world incarnate, wrapped in swaddling clothes as a robe of hope, which exalted his presence of love unto every open eye that would end up beholding God's word being manifested thereabouts. So there, there was a renaissance in, of uh, creation. It was strong. Yea, all of creation was then singing some silent songs of great admiration for a creator who had dared to humble himself as a created seed of a woman, so that he would always be seen as our meek and lowly one unto all of the following generations yet to come. And all throughout the forthcoming eons, in one train of thought and with one purpose and praise, with the enlightened children of God's most beautiful light of magnificence, all end up calling out the wonderful name of Isa Yeshua Jesus in one voice, then in one word, united. And all throughout the ages, with the very same deep wish, uh, redeemed souls would also be raising their voices in worship unto our one God, who is united in body, soul, and spirit. For the elect shall evermore be praising our trinity of one who always abides as three persons within uh, the triune singularity like water, ice, and steam. And lo, in preparation for all of the above, it came to pass that the supernatural star of Bethlehem gladly stood over that most honored manger where our young child prince cried forth his very first cry of love everlasting. And the wise men followed that star. And it also came about that the three magis of Christ's welcoming party, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy and happiness when they saw the brightness of that newborn star of stars, hero of heroes, majesty of majesties, and they knew it. And those kings of Persia, Arabia, and India additionally well understood that this kingly babe would someday not only be the restorer of his people, but the deliverer of all men as well. For the spirit of prophecy had whispered to them that our little Lord Jesus would cause peace and spiritual adoration to become the only laws of enlightened people's hearts. So the Father's love would always be like a fountain, always replenishing itself with nonstop giving of itself the adoration of love that never ceases. And then they would be learning that the more any child of light ever gives away their love, even more would our great I am give back unto them in return, for that is the law of the, our Lord God, the mighty God of love. So they were blessed witnessing the light earlier. And it additionally, though, it needs to be known that well before Gaspar, Melikwar, and Bathsyar, uh, entered into Jerusalem on their camels, asking, Where is he who is born the king of the Jews? Even before that, they had seen Christ's blazing omen, which had shined as our sun, even though it didn't move like any other natural stars of uh, literal natures as they did. Then they followed that phenomenal astral sign most faithfully from the east, away from the lands of the India and the Orient, beyond the ruins of Mesopotamia, and way past the fallen Persian gates of Babylon, even the Sumerian streets of many cobbled stones were honored to receive their anxious shadows as those three wise men moved. But once they finally entered uh, into Bethlehem, they were approached uh, originally, uh, before they got there in Jerusalem, they were approached by the Israel's king uh, about their search for our Lord since the star of Bethlehem had not yet stood directly over his birthplace as of yet, but they knew that he would be in Bethlehem because of prophecy. And then the Herod the Great made a promise. Uh, he made them promise to return by telling those royal majesties uh, a lie that he also wanted to come and worship the little babe. But they would soon be given a divine dream by our Most High, and they'd be warned not to obey that power-hungry madman, or else Christ's life would have been endangered. God had his back, uh, for he was the Father, and Christ was the Son. Uh, and that treacherous ruler was the kind of had the kind of inner darkness that hated 
the Lord's blinding spiritual light. But uh, those kings then brought forth anyways, in spite of the danger of uh, not obeying the king, they brought forth some marvelous riches with them that held uh, some extraordinary, extraordinary things with them. For each had brought forth a beautiful golden bejeweled chest that held gold and frankincense and myrrh and uh, other gems. Even the proudest royal upon earth would have uh, seen such priceless riches as fit for God alone. They were beautiful and they were worth a lot of money. And uh, there were big jewels encrusted on the chests. And those treasure chests were most splendid and only fit for the most majestic king and uh, who was predestined to become the only icon of icons. And nor did those wise men ever doubt that such a, a caring prince of exalted purposes would evermore be lifted up uh, to his coming reign on his great white throne. For they comprehended by a gift of knowledge that the Lord had allowed himself to come forth, being ever so helpless, in order to become the helper of everyone seeking God's ways of love. Even the worst powers of hell's darkest darkness unleashed never would have uh, a snowball's a chance in the hell of disturbing the inner light of that babe whom Mary would lovingly hold onto her breast for suck. And it was a time when the Lord's uh, coming was changing everything, and Christmas wonders were there to behold. And the finest sands of time had raced to the utter moment of beauty of Christ's very first cry. It was a moment that one would seem to send forth a message that true love found a brand new meaning and without any uh, real travail that son of Jehovah had entered into the world that he first had created as the word of God and the virgin became a mother with many mercies and without any great pain during her quick delivery. So Christmas, let Jesus always be the only reason for the season, Isa Yeshua, Yeshua HaMashiach, Emmanuel. And then old things suddenly passed away, and then came the new, and out of the darkness immediately rose the greatest light of love's glory. Then Jehovah's mystery was reserved for the house of Joseph for a secluded season, being set apart from all others. And Mary brought him forth openly, the little Lord, and acquired him with uh, Great, great dignity, and she loved him in his swaddling clothes and guarded him with kindly uh, uh, blessedness. And it was time, it was time. And at the very instant that Son of Man had appeared, in that moment the angels had all bowed down to the new flickering flame of life who was faded to flash his light of love ever so brightly all across the most beautiful green fields of the earth, all across the circle thereof. Furthermore, those energized hosts easily saw the inner illumination within their baby Jesus, and they recalled the Lord's past uh, because he was from the beginning before anything by his word created he them, male and female, for people and angels created them first. But those exhilarated hosts back in those days, they couldn't refrain from worshiping, seeing that Christ alone had a, a, contained a blinding light above all the brightness of all of the other sons of God, for he was God, and he was born to become the everlasting light of the world, who would also be bringing forth many glorious things right into it, right out of uh, eternal times past. And neither was the joyous arrival of that word made flesh like any other birth. Great, therefore, was the eager cloud of witnesses, both seen and unseen. And every knee bending around him was additionally predestined even before time first began for that scene of the nativity would end up being the most important introduction of any soul to man all throughout all the following generations. And at the very same time, uh, many eyes of full, were full of marvel. They were rejoicing as they beheld the over-the-top greatness of that shining little bundle who boldly came from heaven unto earth so he could redeem mankind from doom, death, and destruction eternally. 
was slightly chilly during that momentous hour for the appearance of that infant good shepherd over all the flocks of men, men who would later be uh, um, lifted up far above all. And all over that secluded town of King David's birth, the skies were uh, at that point cloudless. It had stopped snowing, just small little flakes. It was like God was having dandruff as multitudes of unseen cherubim continued coming forth ever so silently upon some miraculous winds of utter marvel and some supernatural breezes of some very amazing amazements. Neither was the weather of that special eve of eves, the first Christmas, nothing but pleasant, just a little chilly all over Zion, since God the Father had deemed that to be a most special time. And it was, for that was the hour of the introduction of his only begotten love, uh, who would be the haven of his followers' trust, the oblivion of their error, as well as the highest tower of their everlasting safety. But in spite of it being a bit cool, the heart-warming heat of the fast-beating hearts of Joseph, Mary, and Isa Yeshua Jesus would quickly be warming up the souls of every anxious person person thereabouts, all the shepherds and the three kings who would be gathered around the manger's hay-stuffed feeding trough, so that they could rest their widest eyes upon our first and our last true vine, and our warmly wrapped tiny lord of lords rested within that makeshift crib like it was a cradle that was fit for the everlasting king that he was. And glorious days were ahead, and they were proclaimed. And then time began racing towards the future season of abounding glory when that little Lord would gladly be giving his people some miraculous things that they had never seen with their own eyes, heard with their own ears, or grasped with their hands. It was also the happiest hour of celebration when all of God's impatient creation could finally quit groaning with great expectations as it earnestly cried out with much thanksgiving over the arrival of that commander of all. For that was the esteemed hour when the spirit realm welcomed our living gateway unto eternity. Even the twinkling heavens around the special gleaming star of David also seemed to be applauding the very first coming of our one and only Messiah, who would end up becoming the minister of ministers. Nor were any winds of idleness then blowing anywhere, for that scene was greatly aglow with the shining of God's holiness, which the heavenly host easily reflected. Twas therefore a restful place of placidity, a secluded zone of peaceful silence, and a real soothing atmosphere where our little Prince of Peace was suddenly the center of attention for all of his creation. For that infant of destiny was the breathing miracle who was sure to become the greatest good news of his very own gospel of the way, the truth, and the light of love. It was a most divine moment for all of the ages. T'was therefore a most solemn hour, an evening of delight, and a wonderful time for those enlightened spectators to show their uttermost respect towards Mary's baby Lord. T'was also a wondrous night when the holiness uh, would swiftly become alive, and a fantastic evening when Israel would, could finally meet its long-expected heir of God's absolute authority, who would be growing in its midst. But above all, it was also the only time in history when anyone finally could have listened to the voice of awakening or witness, have witnessed the deep yawns of that root of immortality. Or it was the only time that people could watch a tear or two coming down from that tiny, tiny bundle of the fountain of the spirit of power of love. But unto those with soft hearts, uh, that little Lord Isa Yeshua Jesus would also become the ensign of the ages, as well as the redeeming helper of strangers, since he alone would always be the grand illumination of love over all of those who were his. And uh, so the season of his long-awaited ministry was just around the corner when he would be telling those children of love that the lightning which cleaves the mighty oak or the quakes that opens up cracks in the earth are only like the play of little children when compared to the furious power of love. And he would also be stressing that once the power of charity was 
finally stirred up with an open heart, love would become like a wild fire sweeping through some dry kindling under a, a windless sky, for such becomes like a black hole that allows no adoration to ever escape. And it was a time of blessedness, and things were just getting interesting.